I'm going to be working on the surf. Uh, if you hear that humming noise, it's just the fan and that zero breeze. This thing's a little portable aircon and it's freaking awesome. What's it blowing out? 21 degrees right now. Ooh. Just got it running in the corner of the shed, seeing how it goes. I'll tell you a bit about that later. But I've got some goodies today. Let me pull them all out. All right, so I've gone to super cheap and I've got a few things. So this thing here is from Oxbeam. So that's one of the switch panels you see me put in the beebulance. And I've got some new diff, got some new diff oils, uh, degreaser, coolant, oil filter. I got an oil pressure gauge because the one in the car is not working. A pod for it. Oh, what is that? Wax and grease remover. There's a couple of stickers I want to take off. Uh, new oil and an oil cooler. What you ask the oil coolers for? That's a transmission cooler if you're worried. This thing, I have an alloy radiator to go into it because I'm pretty sure this one's a bit blocked. I'm not sure. I spoke to Greg from CBS and he's like, oh, I wouldn't even worry about it. But I don't know. I'm used to diesels running nice and cool, but I think this petrol, I think it runs a bit hot. Like the water pump's working, everything else is working, but the radiator seems a bit funny. So I'm just going to swap it out for that alloy one there and we'll be sweet. Next thing we're going to do is piss off this roof rack, all those rhino racks, piss off the awning because we don't want that. I'm hoping to find like a flat rack or something. Uh, what else? If I get time today, I'm going to go to the go up to the farm and pinch the wheels off the Denny Ute and put these wheels on it because I think the nittos will look pretty cool on this thing. What else? The, um, the rear drawers out of my old Jeep, I put them in the back. For some reason they fit. They're not like full size. They're only about 700 mil deep, but they'll work. So that way I can put all the straps and stuff in there and then maybe build like a top. So that way the Esky can go in there. And also my sound bar from Eco X gear, I'm going to throw in the back because the window can wind down. I think it'd be absolutely perfect. If you can wind the window down, hit play on the sound bar and then whoa, party time. A couple other things inside that I want to have a look at. The UHF isn't turning on and that boost gauge is not working. So it's probably just to keep body tube somewhere oh, that's another couple of things I want to look at other than that she's pretty pretty much ready to go so we'll do those things give it a nice degree see if we can find any other oil leaks or anything like that and then hopefully next week I can call my roadworthy dude and he comes out to look at it and says it fails that'll be good now nah, then we'll get it on the road should be sweet all right first thing I'm gonna do is disconnect this line no pressure in it Oh, that one's out. Let's see if the new one fits. Oh. Alright, moment of truth. Look me down easy. And that fits. You beauty. Does the bonnet close? That's the question. I got this thing from um, Cheap Auto Spares and pretty much exactly what I needed. I just needed a little cooler to get rid of the one on the radiator because this radiator is for a manual and the other one is auto. So put the cooler in, I put it just that front here, something like that. And then yeah, so at least that'll keep the transmission cool when we're doing boost runs. Wait. Now oil change, pretty simple. Under the bun on the bottom. We have been running this so it should be Nice and thin. So I don't get it in my eyeball. Oh, I'm not sure if these ones are a magnet on the bottom. This is pretty dirty for petrol. So I'll let that drain and then we'll be away. So while that's draining, the next order of business would be to change the oil filter. So, oil filter doesn't look that hard to get to. It's just a minute. It'll be nice and warm. Awesome. Can tight too. Got this flash oil filter strap. It's a matter of putting it on there. It's sort of like a cam lock. So you can just 
just crack the seal. Ow, 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 ow. That was hot. Let all the oil seep out of that for a bit. Have a quick beer. We're away. Sit in front of my aircon. Next thing is to change the oil filter. So, I'm not sure. Some people recommend it, some people say it doesn't matter. But, do you top up the oil filter before you put it in or do you let it run for that quick little bit? Let me know. But, because the filter's upside down and it's easy to get to, I might just add a bit to it. There we go. That nice clean oil. And you just lube your ring a bit. Put it on. Let's roll her up. And you don't want them super tight, just nice and firm. That way, when it comes to getting it off next time, it's easy. Next bit. Throw the bung back in, fill her up with oil. It's easy as that. Now make sure you do these up. Not super tight, just firm. Now this one would have to be the hardest one. Can't fill it up without spilling it everywhere. Also, don't judge me on my funnel. So oil change is done, everything's done. Um, new radio's in, like I said, sitting about around 60 degrees, which is perfect. Uh, I got the aux beam switch panel there to go in, so we'll put that in. And like I said, with the the key, it's not it doesn't seem to be wanting to work, but there is a like a safety thing down the bottom that you've got to press, to make it work, and that's not working. So I'm gonna rig it up to the aux beam switch panel, and then program the switch panel to be pushed, and then as soon as you let go, it turns off. So hopefully that'll work, and hopefully it doesn't cause any dramas. If it does, that's going to be a problem, but I'm sure I can wire a push to start through the aux beam switch panel. We got a oil pressure gauge to go in, so we'll get inside, then we'll do that. I'm actually going to throw the Zero Breeze aircon inside the car, so that way I can work an aircon, and it's going to be great. It's going to be so good. Oh uh, yeah, we got to wire in that um, Eco X gear boombox in the back, so we'll do that as well. All right, so the switch panel is all wired up in there. Now I'm going to mount the control piece which I'm, I reckon I'm gonna mount right about there. Alright so if you don't remember this thing I put the same thing in the Beerbulance and you can program it to do some pretty cool things so obviously it's got no stickers on I put power there for a reason and I've gone into the app and then I've programmed it to do one thing so you can program it to be like strobe you can pr program it to be like toggle on toggle off or just momentarily and because for some reason the like anti-theft system in this thing doesn't want to talk to the button that's down beside there, I've done this. So it only engages the starter motor when I hit that button. As soon as it, I let go, it turns off. So we'll give that a go running it like that. If it has any dramas, I'm gonna switch back to a normal button, but that is pretty cool. I like that, I like that a lot. So I'm gonna mount this thing in the bottom and make it look all neat and then we'll go from there. There, there you have it, all mounted. I just need to tighten it up a bit, but it's pretty much where that's going to sit out of the way looks good you can also program it for all different colors so if you have a color that you like inside your car then you can program it to that i highly recommend these things these are easy these are simple they work i had one in the beerbulance i like them a lot so right now that's just my start switch but if i want to add any more accessories it comes with a sticker sheet so you can pretty much just pick whatever you want and then up here so underneath this little cover case right here, you have all your fuses and your connection points. So you don't need to run relays or anything. This thing does it all. So it pretty much just wires in. You have your switch there and then you just put it on positive, negative. It's that simple. Then you run your positive and negative to whatever you want to run into this. And this would run it, no drama. It's got all your fuses. You have spare fuses and a fuse puller under the lid there. Highly recommend these things. You don't have to stuff around with trying to figure out relays and shit like that. They work. They're awesome, you can program them. Oh, good job, Oxbeam. Now up next is the oil pressure gauge. I've already gone ahead and 
put the oil pressure sender in there so that's coming straight off the turbo that's where the old one was so that's where that one can go i got a gauge cup here and the oil pressure gauge so i'm going to mount the cup mount the gauge wire it in and then see if we have oil pressure now i swear to god this thing is a gem so working in the car, you know it gets hot. I got this little aircon, portable aircon unit. It runs off batteries. You can plug it in the 240 as well. But this thing is just sitting here blowing cold air at me and it is so much nicer than working here. I was sweating before. I'm like, why don't I just go grab the aircon? It's amazing. All right, it gauges in, gauges in. Gauges. And then we can. We need to tighten that. Oh, oil pressure. Yeah, buddy. No, the only reason I wanted an external gauge is because this one wasn't moving, but I'm guessing with the engine conversion and stuff, the temperate and the oil didn't get moved over. So the temp's down there, oil's there. So I'm guessing that's good. So we're gonna go with that. Aircon is so good. And this car has the aircon compressor, but the aircon, it doesn't seem to work. So I'm gonna get Blair to look at that. But in the meantime, I'm using this thing. Now I suppose the next thing to do is get rid of the Easter egg basket off the roof because ain't nobody got time for that and it looks ugly. I might leave the roof racks on that way the awning stays on so at least got something until I get better set up. This thing actually works. It's just turned off. So <laughs> bonus. So good. So yeah, the next thing I'm going to do is go raid the EcoX gear boom box out of the buggy and then I'm going to put it right here so that way you wind the window down and then turn the tunes on. Have a blast. So I've been talking about this aircon all day, so I thought I'd show you a bit around it. So it's not like, oh, what the hell is that thing? But you're gonna love this. This is gonna change the game. So this is the Zero Breeze. It's a little portable battery powered aircon. So this is your battery. So that's the size of the battery right there. Ah, specs for anyone that's interested. So it pretty much just clips onto the bottom of this portable unit right here. You can unclip it and run it on 240 if you want to. But the battery, I've been running that battery all day and it's it lasted about five hours. So two battery, that's 10 hours worth of sleep time. And if you live in far north Queensland or anywhere where it's hot and you like to go camping, this is for you. So you put this, you can touch the ductwork there and run it straight into your swag. Or you can have the whole thing in your swag and poke the vents out the back. That clips straight onto the back of the unit right there. That's the exhaust. And then you have a little tube that you can run outside if you want to get rid of the condensation or whatever. But... If you turn her on, your temperature is right there. So this thing will fire up. You have like a little night light as well. This piece here comes off if you don't want that on there, but I put it on there strictly for the fact you can face it in your face. Aircon settings on the top. So you can either set it to whatever you want. You can set it to just fan. You can set it to bloody turbo mode, aircon or snooze mode, which pretty much if you press that, It'll just quieten it right down. The compressor will still be running. It'll just be running in its lowest state to save your battery. I'm not sure how long it lasts on the snooze mode, but I'm sure if it, I had it on normal mode all day and it lasted about five hours and I'd pretty much, you've seen me, I had it in the shed the whole time. So this thing is pretty much capable of cooling down an area about the size of a queen size bed. I'm sure most of your rooftop tent situations, it is about the same size of a queen size bed. If you have a setup like on the back of a tailgate or whatever, you can have that down there, run your duct up top and then poke it into your tent and you'll be fine. You can grab a second battery if you like. I have two for the simple fact is charge up both, go camping. And if you don't want to charge it during the day, you have two nights worth of sleep there. So. Every time you go camping, you're sleeping about that four or five hour mark anyway, so no need to worry about that. But this thing was very nice in the shed. I had it inside the car as well while I was working inside the car and it just took the humidity out of the air and it was blowing nice cold air straight in my face. So our snooze mode was at 21.6. We're gonna normal mode, see what we can get it down to. So the batteries aren't too heavy. You've got USB, USB-C charging on the front and you what i was actually doing today was running the aircon and charging the camera in between shots so that way it's nice and cool and the camera is right beside me the whole time which is really good this thing is going to live in the surf and then i'm pretty much just going to put the bed inside the surf and then have that thing running with the duck blowing out the window that'd be more than enough for camping and then eventually when i save up enough and i'll get a rooftop tent for it this thing will just go on the rooftop tent and run all night. I have got a camping trip planned with Matty Power Sag and the Skid Man himself. So I'm gonna take this one out there and then, I don't know, sleep with it for the night and let you know let you know how it goes. Now, Easter basket is off and I think I gotta grease some unis. 
But before we do that, let's go for a boost drive. first and second so so that's first and then you go second and then third fourth that's how that works it's not bad eh? it's not bad at all borrow dad's grease gun grease these unis and then we'll be away all right so we've done a bit of a run now i've got the loading ramp at the farm i'm gonna see how the suspension goes because i'm really interested let's have a look Too bad, not too bad. I expected a bit more, but it's not bad for the solid axle surfy. Don't mind that water coming out, it's probably when I was just filming the radio. We won't talk about that. But yeah, I kicked that front locker in, the locker works, which is great. How good is that? It loves it. Now that was a bit of a mission, but we got it done. Oh, I'm not sure where we left off, but oh, oh, I've had a few beers since then. But I got the boom box in. So this is the Eco X gear, the sound bar that they have. They have an actual, this was the biggest one, but now they have a bigger one again. And they are awesome. Like I have the actual little boom box and that goes everywhere with me. And man, that thing is so loud. It is ridiculous. Does not distort. Man, you can have a party with these things. The other one's got wireless. I might go grab it, actually. All right, it's a bit weird now because of the lighting and it's late afternoon, but this is the sound bar, and these, this thing is loud. This was in the buggy, but it was getting a bit beat up in the buggy. But these are waterproof, so you don't have to worry about anything like that. I was actually going to mount it on the roof there, but I'm sure if you're parked at the shopping center, someone might think it's an easy target. So mount it inside, so that way when the tower gets up, you can just wind the window down. And boom, you got a soundbar. This one's a boulder that I was telling you about. It has like wireless charging, cup holders, and drain holes. Oh. So that way it doesn't fill up with friggin' drink slime and everything like that. Now this thing here is loud. This one will blow your eardrums. And no distortion, nothing, it is amazing. It's on wheels, you've got a little trolley bar so that way if your hands are full, you can just ride her into the party. I've had the Yeti Esky sitting on this thing and rolling it in, handles it fine. On the back, you can actually, ah, so you got a USB output and then you got the mic and aux in. So you can run a mic and have a bloody karaoke night if you want to. But this thing is waterproof as well. You can throw this in the creek and it will float. Awesome bit of kit. Oh, it's got a bottle opener. Awesome bit of kit. It's just long hold. Comes on. Speaker mode. And then you can actually pair. Ready to connect. Shush. You can actually pair these two together. So you can have that one playing in the back of your car, this one over in the paddock, and you can have full on surround sound of your campsite. But these are definitely worth a look at. That sound bar goes for about 700 bucks, and this thing goes for about like around the $500 price range. But this thing is loud. That thing is amazing if you want to put in a buggy or something like that. You can pair your phone, you can listen to the radio, and you can link them together. They've got mad lights at the front. And there's also a light bar at the back. And then that can range through, you see it on the wires there. You go like amber, bright light, dull, and then off. So you can range through the colors as well. So if you just want a particular color, and then you can also make it flash to the beat, whatever you want to do. This one has lights as well. Let me just Ecocast transmitting. Shush. Yeah, there's a light button. This one's got lights as well, and you can make them flash and flicker and do all the cool stuff. And did I say it's got wireless charging? Throw your phone on top, it charges away. 
but that's going to live in the surf that is a perfect spot for it tailgate goes up one the window down party time and then this thing will go into the buggy and anywhere i want to go this one was in the buggy but we found ourselves using this one more because it sat in the back but i think that's a good spot for it right there go check them out eco x gear i'll leave a link in the description i feel like i'm telling you guys a lot of bets like random products and bits and pieces today i don't mean to but i'm just saying that's what i'm putting in the car i love it so yeah that's pretty much it for this thing it is ready to go i'm going to get a roadworthy this week so i can get it on the road and go for a camping trip but thanks for watching boys um if you haven't yet i have shirts uh the logo on the front and then no wackers on the back got stubby coolers as well if you want them so we have a patreon as well every patreon member gets access to the discord we did a live last night with the boys and man it got out of control it was amazing <laughs> hats off to you bommy sorry about that but yeah jump on the patreon then you get linked to the discord and then yeah we chat throughout the week and i show you photos of what i'm up to and stuff like that so if you want to get onto that you're more than welcome but thanks for watching we'll see you next time go like the instagram as well